And now, today's adventure of Outer Scope One, The March to the Throne. Hi, I'm Willie. When me and my friends built our spaceship, Outer Scope One, we never dreamed we'd end up on such a strange planet. Look! This isn't good. This isn't good at all. We can't be sure. They may be friendly. They certainly don't look friendly. <laughs> They're all around us. I don't like this. Let's get out of here. We're surrounded. They're coming after us. We're cut off from outer scope. What are we going to do? There's no escape. Yes, there is. The path is open. We'd better run for it. After them. Where are we? Who or what are those creatures up there? Don't move! We're trapped by steam jets! Silence! I am King Scrub. And I am Queen Polish. We are the rulers of Sannyland. Sannyland is the cleanest land in the universe. Outsider, what land do you come from? Speak, Outsider. We come from Earth. Earth? Bah! I never heard of Earth. Earth is by the sun. What sun? There are hundreds of suns, thousands of suns, millions of suns. But there is only one, Sannyland. The, the cleanest, cleanest land, land in, in the, the universe. universe. Earth is clean, too. Just because you never heard of it doesn't mean it's not clean. This place, Earth, cannot be clean. And you cannot be clean. Only Sunnyland is clean. All outsiders are dirty. But you don't even know us. We might be just as clean as you are. You said yourselves you never met any Earth people before. So how do you know we're dirty? We do not have to know you to know you are dirty. We know ourselves. And we are clean. The cleanest. But you must be dirty. How can you tell? Because if you were clean... You would look like us. That doesn't mean we're dirty. I take a bath every day. And I always brush my teeth. And I comb my hair. I scrub my fingernails. And I wash my hair. That, that is, is not enough. enough. We scrub and we polish and lock and cut. We snip and pile. We rub and brush and scrape and scour. We're clean. We're clean. All sandy landers are clean. We're the cleanest place in the universe. But you, you are not sad. Therefore you must be dirty All outsiders are dirty Dirty, 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 dirty Me. Oh dear, what can we do? It's getting hotter and there's no way to reason with them Well, we've just got to keep on trying They don't care what we say to them They've already decided we're dirty and dirty's the worst thing you can be around here. They say we're dirty just because we're not from Sannyland and don't look like them. But we're not dirty. We're clean. 
If they only got to know us, I'm sure they would like us. We just have to make them listen, or else we'll bake in this place. Well, I'm going to try it. I'm going to try and convince them we're OK. To be continued, next time, the trail is discovered. What do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be? small fence. I'm a North American Indian iron worker. I'm a Mohawk. My uncle was an iron worker. My father's an iron worker. And I'm trying to be an iron worker. It takes a lot of work to be one. When you set steel, it's, uh, you have to have teamwork with it because uh, no one man can do it alone. Every man has a specific job to do, and if it wasn't that way, uh, no buildings would be accomplished. And uh, some points of view, steel working is like working on a a large erector set. And I know just about everyone had an erector set. Uh, really, it's just adding piece by piece and you're following a plan, a specific plan that tells you which pieces go where. And to do anything, it's in a huge scale and uh, there's a lot of other people working with you. Most of the, uh, most of the North American Indians, uh, from my reservation anyway, seems to, uh, Someone in their family was an iron worker or steel worker, whatever you want to call it. And um, it just seems to be a, a tradition or something that they follow down uh, being an iron worker. Sometimes when I come into the city with my wife and my son, it's a nice feeling to show them the tall uh, skyscrapers that I have put up. It's a nice feeling to know that in a hundred years, the buildings will still be there, even though I'm not. is mostly English, was born when the first European settlers began to borrow Native American words to describe the surprising and wonderfully strange things of the New World. I say, I've never seen one of those before. I think I'll call it an aeroplane. We call it Sikankwa. 
awfully good name. Mind if I borrow it? I'll find something else to call an aeroplane. Before they arrived in America, the Europeans had never seen a possum or a muskrat, had never seen a hickory tree, nor tasted a pecan. They had never worn a moccasin, never rode in a kayak, never slept in a teepee. So, of course, they had no words of their own to call these things. The Native Americans had words for them, for these things were not strange and foreign to the people who had lived here all their lives. This animal they called... Ocha. And this a... Regumkum. This beast was known as a... Musu. A Narragansett word meaning he trims or cuts smooth which refers to the animal's eating habit of stripping off all the lower branches and bark of a tree for food. The English borrowed these Native American words, but being poor spellers and pronouncers, slowly changed them until Sogankwa became Skunk. Ochuk. Woodchuck. Ragukum. Raccoon. And Musu, the animal that strips things smooth, became known as a... Moose. Hundreds of Native American words, words like sequoia and squash, hominy and succotash, terrapin and chipmunk, igloo and tomahawk, underwent this type of translation. They are known as loan words, for they are lent to us from the languages of the Native Americans. We have borrowed from other languages as well, from Spanish, German, Chinese, African, Italian, from practically all the people of the world. But it was the words loaned to us by the Native Americans that began the change from English to what we call today the American language. Why don't you make a new friend, make a new friend, make a new friend? My name is Cindy Joseph, and my Native American name is Bumblebee. This is my father. His Native American name is Young Eagle. That's my mother, and these are my brothers. We live in New York State. We all dance together at powwows. Those are special occasions where Native Americans get together. We get to see beautiful beadwork. My mother's been teaching me how to do beadwork too. want to be a teacher, and I'll show my Native American outfit to the class. I only wear Native American outfits to powwows, but my friends like to see them. My father showed my friends his peace pipe. I spend time learning about special traditions. Most of the time, I'm with my friends. I like my name to be Bumblebee, 
And I like being a Native American. Most of all, I like being myself. Martin. I have a pet snake, Nigel. Mom, I'm gonna take the bike to the shop. Honey, I'm gonna be out of the house most of the day. And what about Larry's dog? No problem. I'll sit in Nigel's cage someplace up high. Okay, remember to lock up. Okay. And don't forget your key. Okay. And be careful. Okay, okay. Pat once made trouble for me by pretending Nigel bit him. Here's Pat now. What am I gonna say? Hi. I'll back up. No, no, that's that's okay. I will. Oh, thanks. Well, did you get anything? Wow, oh, man, that's me. A light, flasher, horn, radio, all in one. I saved up all my money for it. I bet it was expensive. I think I'm gonna have to leave my bicycle here. You see the gears lock, and you see the pedal here. That stuff. And the gear here, that isn't on right, and this is just frozen solid, won't move at all. Yeah, guess you are gonna have to leave it. Are you gonna walk home? Well, I thought I might go over to the bowling alley and bowl a little. You like bowling? I'm crazy about bowling. You got some time? Want to bowl? Sure, let's do that. Well, just wait here a minute. bike through. I do it all the time. Okay. Hey, you dropped something. You key. Oh, boy. My mother would kill me if I lost this. She has this thing about locking the house. You'd think some burglar was just waiting to break in. Didn't you know the world's just crawling with burglars? <laughs> somebody very well. You kind of decide in advance that he's not going to like you. Yeah, boy, that's happened to me. Even with somebody I do know. Like the time Nigel was stolen. And the first person I thought of was Larry. And I was all wrong. Yeah, things really turn out different than you expect sometimes. <laughs> wondering if you were gonna bring that up. I was just teasing. I got over that thing. No, really. I do feel bad about that stupid lie. I was sorry the minute it was out of my mouth. I just didn't know how to take it back. In a way, it was a compliment. You wouldn't have done it if you didn't think Nigel was special, even if he is kind of an underdog in the pet world. It's good to stick up for the underdog. It makes you feel like you can stand on your own two feet. You should get a boa, a girl boa. I bet you Nigel would like that. <laughs> And soon we'd have half a dozen little baby boas. And both our mothers would kick us out of the house. <laughs>
got it. Don't worry. Take it easy. I'm down. Lower it. Slowly. Stay over. Okay, good. Good. Oh, oh. You Ow. okay? I think so. Stay right there. Let me get the wood done. I Wake must up. have turned my ankle. Oh. I don't see it. Is it swollen? Ah. Oh. oh. Gee, maybe it's broken. Don't talk crazy. Basketball practice starts next week. Well, I can I can move it a little. I'll tell you what. Pull on the bicycle. And I'll pull a bicycle and you both. Okay, okay. When we get to the road, uh, you can ride the rest of the way on my bike. Okay. Uh, We've almost made it. Thanks for taking me home in style. Right. Hey, since I cheated you out of the bowling, why don't you come in a little? You like Monopoly? Better watch out on the chin. Listen, I promised my mother I'd get her the paper, so let me do that and I'll be right back. And I'll beat you with one foot soaking in a foot pad. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. What on earth? Martin? Panda? Martin, what on earth happened here? Ma, I just got here. Why are you living? It's nothing, Ma. Hey, what happened here? I just asked you that. Did you leave the window open? Of course not. A hat. You know, it must have been a burglar. I wonder why he left it all behind. Something must have scared him. My joke, of course. And what happened to that marvelous watchdog of Larry's? Probably asleep somewhere. But Nigel's a hero. Say it, Ma. Nigel's a hero. Nigel, Nigel, what a pet. You're a boa, Mr. Burglar, won't forget. Hi, this is Woody, and you're in for a thrill. We're gonna make a treat from Brazil. Brazilian Americans think it's neat to make dose. It's a treat. Dose is candy, if you please, in the language of Brazil, which is Portuguese. Take three cups of semi-sweet chocolate chips. One six-ounce can of sweetened condensed milk. One and one half teaspoons of vanilla. And then we need a pinch of salt and half a cup of brown nuts, if you want. First, melt the chocolate on top of a double boiler. You need an older person to help you out when the going gets hot. Then remove from the heat and add the other ingredients. Now stir until the mixture is smooth. Next, get an eight-inch square pan. Do, woo, do. Then line the pan with wax paper. And turn the mixture evenly onto the pan with the paper. Now, when you have spread the mixture out, smooth as can be, without a doubt, put it in the refrigerator and chill for two hours. Next, turn the candy out on a cutting board. Peel the paper off and cut it off. Brazilian fudge is so good! Yeah! Do we know what color the first humans were? No. Not even scientists can tell the color of a person's skin from looking at bones. And bones are all that remain after the millions of years since the first humans were alive. But let's see if we can make a good guess what color they were. Here's a map of Africa and part of Asia. The earliest traces of humans have been found in these hot, sunny lands. Now here are people who live in these lands today. Their skin colors are of various shades of brown, which protect them from the strong sunlight in that part of the world. So we can make a guess that the first humans were of various shades of brown. 
neither as dark nor as light as many people are today. That sure was a good movie. It sure was. I didn't understand it. The good guy was wearing the white hat, and the bad guy was wearing the black hat. But who was the dude with no hat? Now, today's adventure of Outer Scope One. The trail is discovered. Hi, I'm Willie. Our spaceship, Outer Scope One, crashed on a weird planet. And my friends and I are prisoners of the creatures that live here. How are we going to get away? Go on, Willie. See if you can get their attention. Ask them to let us go. As I was telling you, Mrs. Tidy, I enjoy doing a nice, thorough brushing before breakfast. Start the cleaning early, that's my motto. Oh, I do agree, Mr. Neat. I do agree. Get the dust while you're fresh and eager. That's the best way. <gasps> Mrs. Tidy, Mrs. Tidy, look here. What is it, Mr. Neat? Dirt, dirt. Dirt on a public Sandyland walkway? How can that be? I never saw such a thing in my entire life. Never. We must tell King Scrub and Queen Polish. They'll know what to do. They'll find the criminal and punish him. Punish him good. Quick, let's take some evidence. Your, your Majesties, King Scrub and Queen P Polish, I, I want to say something. Speak, outsider. But beware, 
Do not soil us with your words. Clean words. Your Majesties, we don't want to make you mad, honestly. Not by what we say or by what we do. Then watch what you say and do. Yes, Your Majesty. We didn't come here to make trouble. We crashed on Sandyland by accident. Our home is on Earth. And Earth isn't at all like Sandyland. There is no place like Sandyland. Now, just a minute. Maybe Sandyland is cleaner than Earth, but it certainly isn't as friendly. On our planet, we try to be nice to strangers and make them feel at home, especially if they need help. We think that's more important than whether someone is clean or dirty. In fact, on Earth, people believe in all kinds of things, not only in being clean like you Sandylanders, but in other things, too. Oh, dear, Mr. Neat. This is so shocking, so shocking. Dirt on a sandy land walkway. Just wait until King Scrub and Queen Polish find out. They'll be so angry, bubbles will come out of their ears. We are not like you sandy landers. Here, everybody believes in only one thing, being clean. That's what you really care about, being clean. True, outsider. Clean is good. Clean is Sannyland. Who in all of Sannyland would commit such a crime? I simply can't imagine. Once in my great grandmother's time, a crazy razor did something like this. Continue, outsider. Well, another thing we believe is that all people are innocent until they are proven guilty. And that means you cannot say we're dirty until you prove it, until you have real evidence. King Scrub! Queen Polish! Dirt! Dirt on a sandy land walkway! What? What is this you are saying? Look! It's dirt! It's dirt! Yes, they did it. There can be no question. They must be punished! And they will be punished. Oh no! This is the worst thing yet. This could mean the end of us. Gee, Willie, they must have found the trail of breadcrumbs. The ones you dropped to mark the way back to Atterscope. But breadcrumbs aren't dirt. Well, it looks like the Sandy Landis thinks so. And we were so close to getting free. How are we going to talk our way out of this one? To be continued. Next time, Betty surprises them all. practicing for a concert. I'm not practicing for a concert right now, but I am practicing in order to stay in shape, as one must if you want to perform well, just like you eat every day in order to remain strong to do anything that you want to do. Is that harpsichord music? No, it isn't harpsichord music. It's ragtime music written for the piano. But I'm just relaxing and having a little fun, and I love the way it sounds on the harpsichord. I hope you don't mind, but I brought some friends of mine. Can they stay and listen to the music? Oh, certainly. I'd be glad if they stayed. 
In fact, I like it when people listen to me play. That's part of what I do for a living. Would you like to hear some real harpsichord music now? Yeah. Okay. My name is Frances Cole, and I'm a solo concert harpsichordist. I became interested in music from the day I was born, but I actually started my formal music lessons as a pianist when I was three years old. Then later on, when I was about 11 years old, I started, I added the violin, and a little bit later, I played the flute, and then later on, the organ, and then, of course, recently, the harpsichord. The chief difference between the harpsichord and the piano is the way the sound is produced. The jack, which holds a plectra, plucks the string as you press the keyboard down. One of my dreams and aspirations would be to communicate my feelings about the harpsichord to as wide an audience as possible. I enjoy the instrument so much that I can't believe that everybody can't share the same feelings about it. Remember this part that I played? What does that make you think of? Jumping in the water and swimming. Um, I thought of Charlie Chaplin going through a revolving door with a man and in a revolving door with him. It made me happy. Rabbit, I thought of rabbits hopping through the woods. Sometimes I can make the harpsichord sound like another instrument. See if you can tell me what instrument this makes you think of. Good time, rub a dub dub. What's that, ruler? It's a rocker. A red rocker. A really red rocker. I'm gonna rock, rock, rock around the clock and watch you work, work, work and never stop. <laughs> We'd better cut around the corner and hop around the block. Yay! Look, he's off his rocker! Let go, ruler! You're stretching! 
touching a point. Stop it, ruler. You're rattling his lead. What you hear is the rattle of a maraca. A maraca? That's right, Rubberhead. The maraca is a musical instrument very popular in many Spanish-speaking countries. Listen to the sound of the maraca. In Spanish, that's Escucha el sonido de la maraca. Escucha el sonido de la maraca. Let's make a maraca. You mean, vamos a construir una maraca. Vamos a construir una maraca. Take a balloon and drop in some rice. Blow up and tie. Okay, that's nice. Now into the opening, insert a stick to serve as a handle. Right on, that's slick. Ruler, some tape. Coming up surely. Wrap it around till it's tied up securely. Cut strips of newspapers. A really easy order. Dip them in a mixture of flour and water. The pieces we've made are called paper mache. Apply them in layers. It's working. Olé! We'll have to allow it to dry for a while. Then add decorations, Mexican style. The maraca is dry. There's no need to wait. Okay, gang, let's decorate. The maraca sound is terribly sweet. For rhythm, it cannot really be beat. But for me, the very biggest treat is to play the maraca in my big red rocker. Look, Rubberhead, they're playing the maracas we made. And look, Julia, there's our Haitian drum. You can't beat our instruments. Well, maybe you can. You know, you can make your own musical instruments. Using things you find around the house. It's easy. Just watch. Find an old washboard and a thimble for your thumb. Place it next to your chest and strum, strum, strum. Potato grater, forget that last pound. We need you for some groovy sound. Scrape it with a ruler, pencil, or a fork. And you know a toy hammer makes that instrument talk. Washboard grater, add the cover of a pot. Everybody play. Now, what else have we got? <laughs> You can't really have a musical discussion without a section of percussion. Red basket, laundry basket. Paper basket, neat. Upside down you go. Let's hear that beat. Now do your thing. You're a sensation. That's what I call syncopation. Let's add a triangle. Get a wire hanger. Find a heavy nail. Already? Banger! Have you ever made a comb kazoo? Fold some tissue paper in two. Wrap the teeth in the fold. Once it's inside... Place it to your lips. Just hum and slide. I think a rattle would 
would be very nice for adding some Latin American spice. Stuff three or four clips into a balloon. Blow up and tie, then shake and tune. Look out for friends with pins. Beware. Or you'll end up with a bang. And ah. lots of air. instructions. First you take a couple of empty coffee cans, remove the lids, follow these plans, dry cereal and rice in one, fine bottle caps and nails. That's done. Okay, drop those in the other. Now you can put back each cover. Tape the cans together. Great! Shake and tap. That sounds first rate. Homemade instruments are fun to play and make. Now, everyone, grab your instruments and play! Louder! Louder! That's the way! They say music can charm the savage beast. If not, It'll scare him away, at least. Real people, I'd like to introduce you to some real people. Real people. My my name is Martin, and my pet snake is Nigel. I'm going on an overnight hike with Doug, who's just back from California. Martin, do you really have to do this in the front hall? Ma, it's the most practical. It's better than spreading it out all over my room. It's gonna take a Mack truck to carry it all in. It's a good thing the camping area is not too far away. Okay, Ma. Maybe it looks like a lot, but believe me, I need every bit of it. Well, as long as safety's first. Do you have your first aid equipment? What are you gonna cook on? Doug's bringing his new sterno stove. He really got to be a good camper when he was in California. He even joined a regular hiking club. Really? This sounds like a good way to have a reunion. Yeah, we've got an awful lot to catch up on, and a hike's a great way to get to know each other again. You mean you two against the wilderness? Something like that. Hi, Doug. I came through the back door. I hope it's okay. Sure. Welcome back. Thank you. It's nice to be back. I'm glad you brought more camping gear. Martin didn't think oh, you'd have wow. enough. Let me see what you got, Doug. Here's my Sterno stove. It's really safe. That looks like a great piece of equipment. And if you two have to carry food, I think we better get in the kitchen and get it together. Come on, Doug. North. Oh, 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 o
trust what I wanted for supper. A kid that lost. Oh, please, Mr. Bear, I don't want to be your supper. Besides, didn't you see the sign saying, do not feed the bears? Oh, please excuse me, my mistake. <laughs> Did you hear the joke about the rug and the floor? Uh, no. What did the rug say to the floor? I've got you covered. Oh, very uh, funny. Ha, ha, ha. Hey, look at that terrific tree. Look at that bird lying there. It looks like it's hurt. It's not moving. Let's help. Let's take it home. We'll have to take it home in a box or something. The cooking pot. We'll put it in the Careful pot. Careful now. Let's not scare it to death. the little bird I had in California. I had to let it go when I came back east. I bet you liked California. If I had grandparents that lived in California, I'd visit them all the time. Well, you can always borrow my grandparents for a week or two. <laughs> you can introduce me to everybody as your cousin from New York. <laughs> Come on, cousin. We're supposed to be hiking. Did you hear that? I didn't hear anything. There it is again. Sort of a shuffling noise. Aw, uh, it's the bear from before. Aw, oh, come on. You know there are a lot of little animals in these woods, but nothing we've got to be afraid of. <laughs> Fine to me. It'll be getting dark in an hour. Hey, how did you know it's going to be getting dark in an hour? Did you check the sun? No, I looked at my watch. <laughs> you, uh, Since look... you're the expert, you tell me what to do. You put this on this side, and I'll put this spot on this side. I'll put three of these things together. Overnight adventure will be continued. Hi, this is Woody, and you're in for a thrill. We're gonna make a treat from Brazil. Brazilian Americans think it's neat to make dose. It's a treat. Dose is candy, if you please, in the language of Brazil, which is Portuguese. chocolate chips, one six-ounce can of sweetened condensed milk, one and one-half teaspoons of vanilla, and then we need a pinch of salt and half a cup of brown nuts, if you want. First, melt the chocolate on top of a double boiler. You need an older person to help you out when the going gets hot. Then remove from the heat and add the other ingredients. Now stir until the mixture is smooth. Next, get an eight inch square pan. Do, do, do. Then line the pan with waxed paper. And turn the mixture evenly onto the pan with the paper. Without a doubt, put it in the refrigerator and chill for two hours. Next, turn the candy out on a cutting board. Peel the paper off and cut it off. Brazilian fudge is so good! Yeah! Come on down and jump rope with me. I can't, Lily. I'm not supposed to play with you. Why not? You don't like me anymore. That's not the reason, Lily. I have a terrible cold. Achoo! Now, now, the vegetables. 